This video is going to be kind of a little bit funny because I'm painting over the piece that I'm going to be showing you throughout the video. All will be explained, let's just say I struggled a little bit with this one. And so if you're looking for just like a regular painting process video, feel free to skip to this timestamp. I don't know what it is yet, but um, we could be surprised together. So I wouldn't skip ahead if I were you because you'd be missing all the lessons that I learned throughout failing, but you know, you do what you want, it's cool. If I were you, I'd stick around and use this video kind of more like a podcast or a draw with me type thing because you're not really gonna see me drawing for a whole lot of it. But if you've seen my other videos, you would have seen um, when I recorded from my roof and I have the beautiful, wonderful view of Mount Royal from up there. And today we are up close and personal. You can't really tell from this angle, but I'll put in a little bit of a video that um, I'm at the sitting at the base of the mountain for a change of scenery and some fresh air because I need to take advantage of the few warmish days left. So, I mean, it's not that warm, obviously, by my like babushka head covering I have on. Um, anyways, if you see me, like, if there's weird cuts in this video, it's probably because I will probably react weirdly every time I hear a leaf, <laughs> a leaf move because I think it's someone walking near me and I don't want somebody to see me recording. So there may be some weird cuts in this one, but you know. That's okay. So um, I'm gonna be painting over the piece at the same time as talking. So we'll see if I have the capabilities to do that. Honestly, I don't think I do, but we'll see. It's an experiment, right? Um, if you've been following me on Instagram, you may have noticed I stopped posting Peachtober drawings after like day 11. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, now you know. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about creating art when you don't feel like it. Um, the mental game that art becomes, bad art days such as this one, and what can be learned from them, why I won't be completing Peachtober, and why I'm okay with that. Day 12. I didn't end up drawing anything on day 12. Day 13, 14, 15, or 16 for that matter. Day 12 was a little bit of an off day. It was, you know, gloomy and rainy and I wasn't motivated, but spoiler alert, so were all the rest of the days. But, you know, I thought, hey, I could always catch up on two drawings tomorrow, that's okay. And on day 13, I truly believed the same thing, that I would catch up on all the missed art pieces and I would suddenly be super inspired to draw three pieces of art that day. And you know what? I was inspired. I just wasn't motivated. Creating is like so ingrained in me that by 14, 15, and 16 of not drawing, I really wanted to draw because especially on days where I'm not feeling my best, I turn to drawing to calm me down and make me feel better. So by 14, 15, and 16, I was itching to draw. So why didn't I? As I've touched on in every other Peachtober video to date, I have not been loving my art right now. And so even though I did like my last few pieces, I really didn't love them. And I find what tends to happen when I'm going through a period of not loving my art is that if I go even one day without creating, which is very likely to happen when I'm not loving my art because I'm just overall less motivated to draw. I feel this negativity that anything I create will be bad so it's not even worth it to create. I don't know, maybe it's that combined with feeding into the bumminess of those gloomy days. All I do know is that if I recorded this voiceover on days 12 to 16, you would have heard me sound a lot more sad and a lot more confused. And though usually I would have stayed in that place mentally for a lot longer, um, you know, I've gone through periods of not drawing for months, but what got me out of it kind of surprised me a bit. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting it. And it was writing a voiceover for my previous video, one I didn't even end up using. Now, writing and drawing kind of go hand in hand for me. My art's often inspired by things I write. And usually when I feel I can't draw, I turn to writing to get the same effect that drawing has for me. But there are some times where I just can't get myself to do either. And this was one of those times. I go through kind of, I guess, what could be considered like a creative black hole. I go through essentially like a creative black hole where my good ideas feel as if they're just getting sucked out of me into this void with nowhere to go. Like I have these good ideas, but if I don't create them when I think them, they're not gonna get done. And so they just go into this like, empty hole of idea land that never gets created. And maybe that sounds super dramatic, but not, creating for me 
is pretty dramatic. It has some dramatic effects. And so I was not motivated to create at all. And if not for wanting to get my video out, I wouldn't have wanted you know, to sit down at all to write, but I did and it helped a lot. And I remember feeling frustrated that I hadn't written that voiceover when I was feeling happy with my art on days 10 and 11. And I knew I no longer wanted to talk about, you know, anything other than the fact I wasn't feeling like creating or I wasn't inspired. It felt sort of fake to be talking about how I liked my art when now I haven't created in days and I was no longer in the space that I was in when I created those pieces. All I could really think about was how I no longer felt motivated to create at all right now. So I kind of decided to reflect on that and find some solutions. I didn't write too much and almost everything I wrote got scrapped. But you know, then what would have been day 17, so the next day, it was still as gloomy as days 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, which, you know, probably still greatly contributed to my mood. But it had finally stopped raining, so I forced myself to go on a walk with my sketchbook, which led me to finally sketching out an idea for day 12, which, by the way, it was foam. I don't think I ever said this yet in this voiceover, but yeah, day 12 was foam. I sketched out super loose and honestly just had some fun building on the idea and I did it all without reference, which I think is kind of obvious by how loose it was, but I was thinking about how cool it could look if I rendered it in acrylic paint kind of realistically, like with the spray foam looking super shiny and textural and, you know, the face looking kind of realistic but with weird proportions. And and I'll be honest with you, I was so scared to do this and I was so scared to paint in acrylic paint and so I didn't want to jump right into it but I didn't want to give up on drawing and fall into another hole of not creating so the next day I drew on the page next to it also in a super loose way and filled it in with markers and it turned into turned into this piece that's up on my Instagram that I actually like the way it turned out and you know the next day I digitalized my little cat drawings from day 10 to use as um in my thumbnail and I actually made my YouTube banner which I'll put here um with those drawings and I love how it turned out and I made sure I just didn't stop creating and drawing because I didn't want to lose the momentum. I was still pretty scared to paint and also not motivated to sit down with acrylic painting supplies because that's a lot of work but I didn't want to, you know, have this go on for too many days. So I made a kind of like color chart thing digitally to experiment with some colors, which gave me a way to start like focusing on this piece and give me enough confidence to actually sit down and paint it. So that was October 21st when I eventually sat down to paint it. So nine days later. Now I had fun doing this, but man, did I mess this thing up. Um, so I guess if the first section was about the mental game that art was this week and what I did to finally create art, this section is about, you know, trying to learn from art I don't like and what could be learned from this piece. And once again, if I'd recorded this voiceover the day I created this piece, it would have been very different. But instead of coming here and being negative, I would like to be more proactive and try and fix what I don't like because art isn't some crazy unpredictable thing, it's a skill. And like any skill, I can get better at it if I work at it, right? And you know, be getting better will mean I'm more confident and hopefully then less afraid to create, right? So I blocked in color in big chunks like I did on day 11's chick painting which I think might have been my first mistake. <laughs> um, different art pieces require different art processes. And I was trying so badly to make it work that even after the face was looking weird when I first blocked it in, instead of taking a step back and being like, what can I do to fix this? I just continued blocking in the rest, ultimately kind of trying to force that art process to work for something it couldn't really do. I think blocking color this way works really well for me when I have detailed lines that kind of guide where I'm blocking things in, or if I'm taking it step by step and blocking things in slowly so I can keep track of where I want colors to go, or if I'm blocking stuff in like I did with the chick painting in a very painterly way with no sketch, just carving out the shapes. But this piece was super loose and it kind of messed me up because the lines weren't clean enough to keep me organized or section off the painting in a way that I could really see what I was doing. But because there were lines, I was trying so badly to stay within them 
in a way that just wasn't benefiting me. And to be clear, I'm not saying that I should have known this wouldn't work before or even that it will never work, only that when I realized it wasn't working, I probably should have taken a break or a step back. Um, and I think what I learned from this mistake is that, you know, first I had a lot of fun sketching loosely. And that loose sketch, you know, maybe might have been a little bit better suited for a different art material because that sketch that I created on day two had just as loose of a sketch, but I filled it in with markers and I like how it turned out. The second thing I learned is that maybe I need to be less stubborn when creating. <laughs> I find that I go into a piece with no plan and create loose. I love the results. And when I go into a piece with a plan, I tend to tense up and, you know, I have this vision that I want to meet. And when I'm not meeting it, I get super tense and, um, you know, my art becomes less loose and I need to be more adaptable to change when I'm creating because then I will create more loosely. I think my second mistake was that as soon as I realized I didn't like how the piece was going, so after I blocked in all that color, I went into super recovery mode and overworked the piece like crazy with the details without any reference at all. And I was just trying to get the realism of the spray foam without a reference photo and working it over and over, getting so obsessed with the details that I couldn't get right. And it's like, you know, art teachers always say this, like draw what you see, not what you know. And for some reason I thought I knew what spray foam look like. Like, I swear I haven't seen this thing in years, but for some reason I thought it was both shiny and porous as well as smooth and textured all at once. And it's kind of a weird looking thing. And I greatly would have benefited from looking at a photo instead of looking up the reference photo at the beginning though. I waited till the very end and then I looked one up and once the paint was super wet and I was super frustrated, then I tried fixing the mistakes with a reference photo with wet paint in wet paint which watching the footage, I don't know why I thought this would work, but it is, you know, kind of frustrating to watch, but that's okay. Which led me to rewrite my voiceover to my last video and sort of evolve my opinion on reference photos. And so if you watch that video, you may already know my solution to this problem, but I need to level up my skill because I think if I knew how to paint something shiny kind of realistically, I probably would have struggled a lot less in the first place. I don't know why I always expect myself to be able to adapt things into my style that I've never drawn before. Like the way you are able to stylize things is by having a way to draw them in the first place, you know, and that comes from actually having drawn them in the first place, you know, and that requires some reference photos because they would have helped. And last thing, I think I could have afforded once again to take a step back and I struggle with this a lot. Like, even though I know I should take a step back, I want everything always to be solved right away. And I'm the same thing with everything. Like, I'm impatient and I hate leaving things unsolved or messed up. And taking a step back kind of goes against everything that I am. But, you know, it would have helped. And I, it's something I'm going to need to work on because already twice in this piece, I would have benefited from taking a break. So to be honest, after this day, I didn't feel like working on this anymore, but I felt, you know, really dissatisfied because it's like I didn't go into it with a positive attitude and messed it up. I went into it with days of feeling like I would mess it up. And then obviously I messed it up, you know, people say it's going to be <laughs> kind of weird, but people say pets can pick up on how you're feeling, right? They're really observant. And I'd say my art, can pick up on how I'm feeling too. Like maybe not your art, um, but your creative process, you know, by going into it with a bad attitude and negativity, even subconsciously, I'm really setting myself up, you know, for a bad painting session and I'm not setting myself up for success because why would my art skills shine through if I don't believe them to do so, you know? So because I felt like I didn't give this guy a fair chance, I decided to do some little experiments um, with some watercolor by making two little paintings. With one I did super loosely, um, just blocked in some watercolor shapes and then outlined the shapes, went back in with some more watercolor, kind of like a different approach, kind of like the approach I did in my video for days, I think it was eight and nine for the rainbow day. That's kind of what I did. And then for the second approach, for the second sketch, I sketched out super loose and tried to color it in basically the same process I did for the foam piece I didn't like in the first place. And you know, I found out that that just doesn't work for me. <laughs> if I'm gonna sketch super loose, you know, well, okay, let me say this differently. I think my third mistake was being loose in the wrong way. And I know that's not as clean of a title as the other ones, but hear me out. 
I think being loose is great in sketching and, and in art it's incredible and it's a pretty fundamental part of the way that I create but being loose works when you're confident and when it's a true looseness because being loose and not confident just kind of makes me feel messy, it doesn't make me feel loose and free. If I'm scared to create, I'd rather just have clean borders to fill in and you know, I guess my solution for this, other than just like, I don't know, gaining confidence, <laughs> is I think I need to allow myself to create in the way that I need for that day, you know? Like, even though I sketch this piece super loosely, and that looseness was true the day I was sketching, you know, I couldn't have that same level of looseness with the acrylics because I was scared to create with them and I was so scared to fill it in. And so I should have either used a different medium that I could have been as confident or loose with to match the sketches energy or maybe I should have done some more practice before going in with acrylics and then I would have been more confident like a true confidence that I could have matched the looseness of the sketch okay anywho I think now I'm satisfied with having painted over this piece it's not um, completely painted over I left some borders but, uh, you know, that's a good way to remember the piece that was once there. And now that I've painted over this piece and the layers of paint in my sketchbook are building up a lot and this piece is going to be super thick, I'm going to add some more layers by, I think, trying to paint my face from reference on this page with acrylics. And then maybe I'll try and practice drawing some or painting some spray foam with reference and then try to apply that technique onto the face that I painted like what I should have done in the first place. And that's my plan. I'd like to paint that here, but I don't think I really want to put out some acrylic paints in the cold here right now. And so we're going to go home and do that. Let's see how that goes. Hello, this is um, voice record Sophie from many moons later, because as you could maybe guess, um, I don't know if you could guess, but as I could probably have guessed, I procrastinated this for a very long time. And I also didn't end up following my own instructions because I started off this painting. I basically drew the sketch this day, didn't practice painting any of the spray foam like I thought I would, didn't really draw the sketch in that realistically, and, you know, <laughs> um, completely changed the plan I had. But I think it worked out in my favor. Um, before we get into this, I'm just going to say, first thing, I usually make a little script for what I'm going to say, and with this, I'm not doing that, so this might be all over the place. And second thing, the lighting is also all over the place in this clip, and so these clips are just crazy, but it's okay, you know? It's the end of the video, and for all the people who skipped forward to see this uh, drawing session, I, I don't know, that's on you. Go back and watch the rest of the video, I guess. Anywho, so I painted in this sketch I drew, and I was trying very hard, as you can see, to block in the color within the lines, like basically coloring in a coloring book. And I found this didn't work for me <laughs> very well. You'll be able to see, I think I spent like five minutes adjusting this nose. And like that's in time lapse time. Like I swear I spent like 20 minutes just focused on adjusting this nose and it was driving me crazy. In the end, um, I got the face looking okay, but also I was just going to cover it up. So I, <laughs> I kind of just gave up on it. Um, and I'm looking at the face right now, and it doesn't look very good. And it also doesn't look like the style I want to paint in ever. And at this point in painting, I was thinking, wow, I don't like acrylic paint, as you might have heard me say many times on this channel, because every time a, a medium stop work, stops working for me, sorry, I just decide that I don't like it, and that's, you know, maybe because of my lacking skill set with it. Like, if I had maybe been better at painting with acrylic paint, I wouldn't have not liked it as much. But I think the fact is, is that every medium that you use can work for you in a different way. Even if you have no skills with it, even if you've never used it before, you can find a way to make that medium work for you. It's just, I think we're all so focused on making it look the way we think things are supposed to look. Does that make sense? Like, I was focusing very hard on trying to make this art piece look, I guess, kind of realistic. I don't even know what I was going for, to be honest with you. Instead of doing what I could naturally do. 
And if I had just, you know, if I'm trying to make it realistic, I should go for realism. But I ended up finding out with this piece on the left-hand side, I just went in it naturally because at the point of getting to this piece, I didn't feel like painting in the style that I did on the other side. And so I completely changed my approach. I went in super loose, just mixed up colors. You, you can just see the eyes right now, but I will continue to um, to work on that. And as I work on it, I realize that I don't hate acrylic paint. I just hate the way that I paint with acrylic paint based off of how I think I should paint. Does that make sense? Like, I... Oh, here's where the colors change a lot, and they look really weird because I adjusted them so they wouldn't look as dark. Anyhow, I'm sorry about that. But anyways, that little section of that face is probably my favorite segment of a piece of art that I've made in a long time, and I don't know why, because it's not that good, and I can't explain it. I just really like that little segment of the face, the face so much so that I end up completely trying to adjust this face that I spent so long working on to try and make it feel as loose and natural as that other one. And I just can't achieve that th that same style because, again, the other one was actually loose and natural. And this one now, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to fix this. I got to fix this. And I'm going into it with this, you know, first thing, bad attitude because I don't like the way it looks. Um, and second thing, I'm going into it with this hyper recovery mode attitude where I'm like, oh, I've got to fix how bad this looks. And so... It's never going to look as good if I'm going into it like that because I don't feel loose. But I really like this little, that little face peeking through the green there. I'm really happy with that. And as you can maybe tell, um, I just completely abandoned the idea of making this spray foam look shiny because at this point in the painting, I realized I didn't feel like painting this painting anymore. And I kind of felt okay with that. Like I felt like in a way, even though like I couldn't fix that other face and the spray foam doesn't look like spray foam, when I look at this piece now, I'm like, here's a face where I was trying to force the acrylic paint to work for me. And on the left-hand side is a face where I allowed it to do what it was going to do. And when I look at the two together, I almost feel like I'm looking at like a do this, not that YouTube video. I don't know if you've ever seen those in art, but I feel like this page, I feel satisfied. I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place with it, but <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this ending voiceover is kind of like, again, a little all over the place, but all I'm saying is that I think I realized that acrylic paint can work for me and all mediums can work for me, but I have to either learn how to make them work in the ways that I see other people make them work, or I need to just allow myself to paint in the way that I know how to paint and the way that will come out naturally, you know? Anyhow, um, thank you for watching. I'm going to top this off here because this has been going on for far too long. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will have one more Peachtober video out because, like I said, I am not going to be continuing Peachtober, but I have one more that's going to be coming out, and then we will get back to our regularly scheduled, I guess, I guess these are all the same, basically, just more art videos. So thanks for watching. Bye.